Hey everyone, me Kevin here. So you're probably wondering how court went today. And uh, let's just say it started out really interestingly. The attorney who was representing me was told that he didn't have standing to represent me. And we had to pull a fast one on the judge, or, or with obviously the judge's approval, so I suppose it's not really a fast one on the judge. But we had to pull a fast one and uh, essentially tell the judge that my attorney was fired. <laughs> and that I would stand in and represent myself. See, I wasn't actually allowed in the Zoom courtroom. The uh, Only the attorneys were allowed in. So it was two attorneys and the judge. And uh, the, the judge authorized basically the removal of my attorney and then the replacement with me <laughs> to present my own case. So here I am with no legal experience presenting my own case. And the judge starts with, I'm inclined to deny your case because of rule 70 uh, or 2716 of the elections code. And I'm like, no problem. I got this. I know exactly where you're going with this because I got a whole thing ready for you. No, I didn't say that. But I said, well, your honor, could I present my case with my iPad and a flow chart? And she's like, uh, what? <laughs> so kind of just like how we go through stimulus bills. We go, here you go, here you go, your honor. Here are my arguments. Let's keep it nice and simple. In fact, let me jump on over, over to this one. It's a little easier. This was the one that I used in, uh, in court. And I said, look, your honor, it's very simple. Our opponents, our opposing counsel argue that br a brand is not allowed on the ballot. And so we made the argument that it's very important to know that a brand is an umbrella phrase. A brand could represent a product, something you use, a, a service, something that's done for you, uh, or a personal identity or a nickname. But nicknames are allowed on the ballot. So if nicknames are allowed on the ballot, then technically a form of a brand is allowed on the ballot. Uh, and I gave the examples of like, for example, Trump is a brand. A, or Larry King is a nickname, right? His full name is like Lawrence Harvey Zeiger or something like that. Anyway, then we made a second argument and that was legal precedent that the Secretary of State had previously allowed a sumo wrestler's name to be on the ballot as the sumo wrestler's personal identity. So Kurt Takakazi Reitmeier got on the ballot and Takakazi means wind from a sword stroke sumo name per LA Times. So in other words, this person got their brand on the ballot in 2013. Now, the judge initially said, hey, I'm declined to deny this because of 2716. And I'm like, it's part of my argumentation. Don't worry, I already know where you're going with it. See, code 2716 uh, says that you cannot put a trademark or brand name into your ballot designation. Well, when you're on a ballot, you get two things. You get your name, like this Kurt Takikazi Reitmeier, and you get a designation, which is independent middle rate sumo wrestler. And the argument of the law is that you can't put like CEO of Target or CEO of Apple into the designation. But that's not what we're doing. We're putting financial educator and analyst in. So I made the argument that I just want my name, the nickname, and stage name on the ballot, just like Kurt had before me. This is this is where branding is actually not outlawed. Like the law does not say you cannot have a brand in here. In fact, the opposing counsel themselves said that stage names are totally okay to be on the ballot. Wasn't well, that what Meet Kevin is? And remember, I'm trying to be on the ballot as Kevin, Meet Kevin, I'll just put MK, and then my last name, Pathrath, right? That's, it's not like I'm not trying to put my last name on there, right? Anyway, so I told the judge, this lawsuit is not about ballot designations. So therefore, you cannot use the law 2716 to say that I'm not allowed to have my name on the ballot because this has to do with ballot designations, not uh, where the names are. And then I made the fourth argument that those of you who responded to my polls made it very clear that you know me as Meet Kevin, you watch me as Meet Kevin. If you saw me on the street, you'd reference me as Meet Kevin. If someone asked you who you're voting for, you'd say Meet Kevin. And the opposing counsel tried to make the argument that Fox News never called me Meet Kevin, when in reality, if you look at my Meet Kevin Meets Kennedy interview, she literally at two minutes and 11 seconds in says the word. And to that I say, yes, Meet Kevin. So I made this complete argument. That's essentially the crux of our case here. Remember, the judge went into this case wanting to deny the case. And the judge 
said uh, towards the end, she, which, which my attorneys who were watching said, I've never seen a judge say this, which is really cool. I appreciated that. But she essentially said that I did a really good job. And she's like, do you have some kind of legal background? Because it was really organized and like really good or whatever. And I'm like, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but it's like, thank you. I know because I've been just living and breathing this case. Like I, I, I know that meet Kevin is my name. And then she promptly ruled against me. Uh, so my, my attorneys mentioned that good luck in Sacramento getting a judge like we had here, who's apparently trying to get promoted. I don't know. They said something about trying to get promoted by Gavin Newsom and you're a Democrat running against the Democratic party and Newsom, you're basically running against the party. Like you expect the judge to rule in your favor, even if you have the best arguments in the world, like good luck. And I'm like, oh, well, I, I, okay. I mean, that, that doesn't sound free and fair. That, that sounds like censorship to me. That sounds like putting the competition down. And then I ask, well, what about appeals? And my attorneys say, well, appeals are even worse. They're even more partisan. So uh, they basically rubber stamp whatever the government wants. So in other words, I got screwed. It really sucks because even though you think the law is on your side, and you're just trying to provide transparent clarity to people that, hey, Kevin Paffrath is me, Kevin, because that's who, who you know me as. Like, it would be with my last name. It's been done before. Apparently, because it comes across as a brand, uh, I get shafted. So, big warning shot to all influencers out there. Use your real name if you ever want to get involved in